I would say club cricket every day. It's a proper community feel. It's hard work running a cricket club. It's given me friendship that will be with me for the rest of my life. Club cricket, ground zero for the sport. With approximately half a million people taking part each summer, we at Sky decided to check up on the health of the grassroots game. First to the northwest, three clubs visited, starting at Chorley, who, like many, have benefited from the ECB's All Stars program for five to eight year olds. All Stars has been a big hit here. It's been, it's been incredible, really. Um, on a Friday night, that's when we run it. The bar's always packed, so we're getting money from from that. But there's 75, 80 kids out there which can be quite daunting <laughs> to manage. Um, so, Especially if you're not doing the coaching yeah, well, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And once they've done eight weeks at All Stars, then they're in, we run a winter programme, so then we pick up players then, and then they form ultimately the, the under-10 softball team for the next year, and then the under-10 hardball, and then they're through the system then. It must be hugely satisfying to actually see those who have actually performed in all-Stars cricket or started in All-Stars cricket and then gone through the junior levels and actually then turn up on your team on, on a Saturday yeah. in the third level. I mean, that must give you a huge sense of satisfaction. Yeah. It is great. I mean, I've played, you know, Alfie Dobson, who's opening the batting in our first team now. He played, made his debut age 12 in the third team and I watched him. We played on the main ground um, on a Saturday and he hit 85. And it, it was just great to watch, you know, you think this little lad at 12 like, <laughs> with, from the, with the bat is better than I ever will be. Sefton Park Cricket Club is situated in the heart of Liverpool. When I visited, players Frankie and Aisha explained how they were able to make women's cricket a force within the club. So when we started, sort of, I think they just, we were a bit of a sideshow, mm -hmm. you know, on a Wednesday night and all they're just playing the softball. <laughs> and then because we, well, we started winning. <laughs> we started, that's the truth. We started winning. We'll have a bit of that. Yeah. And we, yeah, we won yeah. everything. Yeah, so they had to and, take us seriously. And serious. we just got yeah. bigger and bigger. Um, and so they kind of had to take us seriously. We've got about 40 members now, wow. which is just unbelievable. If you told me two years ago we'd have 40 members, I would not have believed you. Curtly Ambrose. Oh. You have Curtly Ambrose down here who's playing for Chester Broughton Hall, 1986. Imagine on a weekend coming up and, and facing Curtly on a Saturday. You've had a hard week at work and then Curtly's thundering in at you. And Mr Winston Benjamin Winston as Benjamin well. Winston Benjamin as well. And the other one, what was this frame by frame? Mushtaq Ahmed. Yes. Former Pakistan and, and Sussex leg spinner also performing here. So it does show you the standard of, uh, in the men's game, the sort of standard of overseas professionals that used to come over and, and, and it shows the standard of the comp. Despite the standard of cricket remaining high in the northwest, Oliver explains how red tape has made it more difficult to get top overseas professionals. Back in 2019, you were able to have two Category 3 players. That was one professional mm -hmm. and one overseas amateur. Um, we did that, a lot of other clubs did it in the Northern League and it worked fantastically well. You were seeing some top talent come over and the standard on the Saturdays yeah, right, was yeah. next level and why wouldn't you want that? Why would you not want to be playing at the best level you can against the best players? They used to say, if you can see Rivington Pike, it's going to rain. If you can't, it already is raining. Welcome to Horwich Cricket Club, my old stomping ground as a junior, part of the Greater Manchester Cricket League, and we thought it'd be worthwhile checking out what the state of the game is in this neck of the woods. Well, Chalks, firstly, it's great to see you. It's great to be back home uh, here at, at Horwich. Things have changed a lot uh, over the last 30 years. Last time I was actually here playing alongside you. Generally speaking, this is a very generic question. How is club cricket faring? In, in this region? Personally, I think we're struggling from a lack of numbers. We don't have the, we have the, the, the youth and the, the juniors coming through, but once you get to a certain age, 15, 16, the numbers tend to d disappear. It's, you know, it, we just don't get the kids coming through into senior cricket like we used to do. For me, it has to happen where clubs have got to get into the 21st century with standards so that you maintain a high quality of cricket. And let's get back to that high quality of cricket. You've got to have that constant conveyor belt of players to keep churning the games out. So I think what you'll find, or will find, is 
the bigger clubs will get bigger mm. and the smaller clubs will unfortunately um, cease to exist, which is what's happened. Like I say, getting 11 lads on the field on a Saturday and a Sunday, it can be really, really hard work. It can be a 365 job. It's all right ploughing loads of money into your first team, for example, and you know, you can't do it, but teams do. They'll pay five or six lads and they'll have success now, but then they'll go missing because they've not got the development coming through and that's what you need to focus on is keep bringing them through at, you know, like a steady rate. Nineteen thirty-four. The amount of people, and that was just for a league game, just a little, just, just a normal game. And with with this one here, there used to be a little gate here, and a man used to sit in this pavilion and charge you three D, three D, and that guaranteed you a seat and an ice cream. Well, Sefton Park may be 163 years old, but the club's ability to move with the times is helping turn followers into players. We're getting more followers, and then people are, you know, from Instagram are messaging us, messaging us, can we join, and when's your practice, and things like that. And just to see the social aspect of it, to see the different types of people that are coming to the club, and you just think, oh, do you know what, I could fit in there, and they seem quite nice. And we get a few new people coming in and saying, oh, you're going to make a TikTok today? And I'll be like, yeah, let me just direct <laughs> yeah, yeah. this a little bit. <laughs> let me think of a song. It's not just on the field. To run a club, a huge amount is done behind the scenes. How much time do you actually devote to your sort of committee work here at Jolly? Um, well, I have a full-time job and it's not far off behind <laughs> as well. It, it never stops. I wouldn't do it if I didn't care and didn't enjoy it. The day I stop enjoying it, it becomes a chore, is the day I'll step back and take a breather. People lean on you more as, as other people's lives get busy. Oh, the committee will sort that, rather than just a general member sorting it. Mm. So the, the, the committee get committee burnout, I always think. It's hard, it's hard work running a cricket club. Do you still get reasonable crowds? Oh, on a Saturday time? afternoon, uh, on a, a, a reasonable day, we'll get 100, 120 people okay. all sitting outside, enjoying the sun, enjoying the cricket, and very, very knowledgeable. I absolutely love it. If you, if you offered me a, a, a high-class Northern League fixture or Liverpool comp as well on a Saturday compared to going watching, say, the Blast or, you know, like a, a first-class game at Old Trafford, I would take club cricket every day. To say that it's been life-changing is actually an understatement because it, three days in moving to, to Liverpool, I joined the club. They're like a family now and so welcoming, so it's, um, yeah, I think I'm an official Scouser now. Damn. <laughs>